Greetings to all of you and God bless you today. Hope everybody's doing well. Folks, I'm going to keep saying it every time I come on here. Jesus is coming and Jesus is coming one day very, very, very soon. Folks, there has been four Israeli airstrikes inside of Syria in just the last six days. That is insane, including the airstrikes in the suburbs of Damascus, Syria. What in the world is going on inside of Syria right now? What's going on with the massive increase of Israeli airstrikes lately inside of Syria? It seems like there is a lot of movement by Iran and its proxies as of late, moving weapons and other stuff right around the Damascus area. Remember, Damascus is a hub of terror that Iran and its proxies use to move stuff or uh, move stuff around against the nation of Israel. In fact, we have had over 30 Iranian cargo planes since the beginning of 2022 land at Damascus International Airport. And what do you think is on those planes? It's weapons and other materials for Hezbollah and the other proxies of Iran to use against Israel. Russia has told Israel to stop the airstrikes inside of Syria immediately, but Israel has no choice at this point but to act against these terrorists trying to use Damascus as the, this hub of terror to attack Israel. So let's jump right into it, folks. Again, there has been four Israeli airstrikes inside of Syria in just the last six days. Let's talk about the most recent one that just happened last night. This is uh, recently in from the Times of Israel. Israeli airstrike kills two near Damascus amid series of attacks. Let me read some of this to you. Two Syrian civilians were killed in an Israeli airstrike near Damascus early Tuesday. Uh, last night, Syrian state media said the incident was the fourth airstrike attributed to Israel to hit targets in Syria in less than a week and came a day after the Israeli Air Force downed a suspected Iranian drone in Israeli airspace. The attack came from the direction of the Golan Heights and targeted several sites around the capital, Damascus, and the southern region. You're not only getting the threats from Russia against Israel to stop these airstrikes. Uh, you're seeing the threats from Iran as well, using its proxies. It almost looks like right now, again, with Israel striking inside of Syria four times in just the last six days, it almost looks like right now Israel is at war with the proxies of Iran inside of Syria, and especially around the Damascus area. This is a very uh, critical situation that could develop even crazier in the coming days and weeks. Uh, but then this is just in from the Times of Israel. Amid repeated airstrikes, Syria warns Israel against total escalation in the region. Damascus accuses Jerusalem of trying to escape its internal problems with raids as Netanyahu vows no dispute will prevent Israel from defending itself. So I just want to connect the dots with you guys. We've had 30, over 30, Iranian cargo planes since the beginning of 2022 land at Damascus International Airport, no doubt to distribute weapons uh, to Hezbollah and the other proxies of Iran to use against Israel. We've had massive uptick of activity of the proxies of Iran, including Hezbollah, again, just doing very suspicious things around uh, the capital, Damascus, Syria, which is leading to a massive increase of Israeli airstrikes on Iranian targets, mainly Hezbollah and some other proxies um, inside of Syria. And again, we've had four Israeli airstrikes inside of Syria in just the last six days. It almost looks right now like there is a war going on between Israel and the proxies of Iran inside of Syria. Uh, going on right now as we're seeing this massive increase in activity and airstrikes between Israel and the proxies of Iran, especially around the Damascus area. Now, why does this get my attention? And it should get your attention too, if you know your Bible. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 17, verse 1, the prophet Isaiah over 2,500 years ago records the following. The burden of Damascus. Behold, Damascus is taken away from being a city, and it shall be a ruinous heap. 
So very clearly in Isaiah chapter 17, verse 1, something is going to occur which causes Damascus to become a heap of ruins. It's going to just, whatever is going to happen is going to destroy Damascus, Syria. Now, there's some people that say, well, this prophecy has already been fulfilled. Uh, I disagree with that, and I'll tell you why. Damascus is one of the oldest inhabited cities in the entire world. There is subscribers on this very channel that live near or inside of Damascus, Syria. And I can tell you this, there is parts of Damascus that are still bad, in bad shape. But overall, you can still live in Damascus, Syria. As Damascus, Syria, as a city, it has not become a heap of ruins. But this prophecy very clearly says in Isaiah chapter 17, verse 1, something is going to occur in the future that is going to cause Damascus to become a heap of ruins. It will be destroyed. And in fact, when you read Isaiah 17, it actually tells you the timing of when it will be destroyed. When you go to Isaiah chapter 17, verse 14, we read, And behold, at evening tide trouble, and before the morning he is not. This is the portion of them that spoil us, and the lot of them that rob us. So very clearly, when you read Isaiah chapter 17, again, something is going to happen overnight in Damascus here. So uh, evening tide, it talks about it being there at evening time, and before the morning, he is not. So something is going to occur overnight in Damascus, Syria, that is going to cause it to become a heap of ruins. Now, what is going to cause the destruction of Damascus? I don't claim to know that answer, but this is what I can tell you. Damascus, Syria, again, we know it is a hub of terror that Iran and its proxies, especially Hezbollah, are using to distribute weapons to use against the nation of Israel. We know Iran is, with its whole nuclear program right now, I believe they already have enough nu uh, enriched uranium for several nuclear bombs. What they're telling you isn't the truth. Uh, however, uh, what is being moved around Damascus by Iran and its proxies? We know several general, we know a general, I think more than one, has come forth and actually said that there is nuclear material underground in Damascus, Syria. So we see a massive uptick increase in Israeli airstrikes uh, inside and around the suburbs of Damascus, Syria. We've seen four Israeli airstrikes inside of Syria in just the last six days. And we got the threats from Russia, Iran, and Syria right now, all against Israel saying, stop it. Knock it off. Israel saying, we are going to defend ourselves. If you continue to move this stuff around Damascus, we are going to act. And folks... It is only a matter of time before this prophecy is fulfilled. Here's what you have to understand. Looking at the current situation, this could be the headline in tomorrow's news, that Damascus has been destroyed. Now, we pray for the people of Damascus. We do, but we know what the Bible says is going to occur. But looking at the current situation, Hezbollah and the other proxies of Iran continue to move stuff around the Damascus area, including, I believe, possibly nuclear material. Generals have come forth and said that there is nuclear material underground in Damascus, Syria. Who knows what the Syrian president, Bashar al-Assad, has stored in Damascus. It is only a matter of time before something is hit or something else occurs that is going to cause the destruction of Damascus. Not because I say so, but because the Bible says so. I'm just looking at what's happening right now, folks, and I'm looking at what my Bible says. And this could be the headlines uh, in tomorrow's news. That's how close it looks like this prophecy is to being fulfilled. And I'm not saying it's going to happen tomorrow. I don't know that. But I know something is going to occur overnight in Damascus, Syria, in the future. And before the morning, it will be a heap of ruins. Keep your eyes on Damascus, Syria in the coming days and weeks. Because again, it looks right now like Israel is at war with the proxies, Hezbollah and the other proxies of Iran inside of Syria, especially right around the Damascus area, folks. It's amazing to watch all of this develop, but the Bible said that this is what would happen. And we're watching the stage getting set up for this prophecy to be fulfilled and most likely the
the very near future. And all I can tell you is if you're watching this video right now and you don't have Jesus Christ in your life, just look around the world right now and everything occurring and look at what your Bible says. You will see several things are true. The Bible is real. The Bible is alive. Jesus is real. Jesus is alive. And Jesus is coming back and he is coming back one day very, very, very soon. This current world order, it is sinking and it is sinking fast just like the Titanic. You need to get on the lifeboat right here and right now. That lifeboat is Jesus Christ and him alone. I'm not telling you to get religious. I'm telling you you can be saved right here, right now, as you're watching this video. Now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. So what do you have to do to be saved? Well, the gospel of your salvation is found in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 to 4. Belief. You're believing Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. The sin debt that you could never pay on your own. Jesus Christ paid it in full with his blood on the cross so you could be reconciled back to him, forgiven of your sins, and be with him forever in heaven. So you're believing Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. He was buried and he rose again. He resurrected on the third day as it is written in the scriptures. That's the gospel of your salvation. If you're still confused, here's the bottom line. Every single one of us is a sinner. We all miss the mark. We all fall short of the glory of God. And our sin separates us from a holy, a just, and a perfect God. But God loves you so much that he would come down. He would be born of a virgin. He became flesh. He dwelt among us. And he was brutally tortured and crucified, and shed his precious blood for you on that cross at Calvary. Again, the sin that, that you could never pay on your own, Jesus Christ paid it in full with his blood on the cross, so you could be reconciled back to him, forgiven of your sins, and be with him forever in heaven. That is love, my friends. That is love. The bottom line is this. Heaven and hell are very real, literal places, and you will spend an eternity in one of those destinations. Hell is a real place. It's eternal torment. It's eternal separation from God. I don't want you to go there. Jesus does not want you to go there. But if you die without Jesus Christ, you will be separated from God for eternity in hell. And I am going to tell you the truth because I love you. Jesus Christ is the only way to the kingdom of heaven. And he's the only name that can save you. I am begging you. I am imploring you to get saved right now. Put your faith and your trust in the blood of Jesus right now. Believe Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. He was buried and he rose again. He resurrected on the third day as it is written in the scriptures and do it now because tomorrow is not promised and make no mistake about it. Jesus is coming and he is coming one day very, very, very soon. Keep looking up, keep watching with me and God bless you all.